Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Grand Tactician The Civil War, a new-ish game out on Steam that is a tactical and strategy Civil War game. Uh, we are playing as a Confederacy in this series, and it is November of 1862, and the war is going very well for us indeed. We have taken Washington, D.C., we have taken Baltimore, we have taken Frederick, Maryland, driving deep into the heart of Yankeedom. Although, is Maryland really Yankeedom? Washington, D.C. sure is, uh, in the Eastern Theater. Although the Federals have launched a counterattack, they've organized the Army of the Potomac into multiple corps, one of which we just defeated in front of Frederick, Maryland, but now they have also sent a corps to besiege our lone corps in front of Washington, D.C. And so we have about 14,000 soldiers uh, are surrounded by about 26,000 Federals. What we're going to do, because I believe we've driven back the Fourth Corps for the time being, uh, and hopefully the uh, Third Corps is too weak to advance, it looks like they only have about 30 200 men. Uh, the first corps is 22,000. They're in better shape to fight. Uh, but the intention is going to be to take one corps, James Longstreet's corps, swing it east back to Washington uh, in order to allow us to fight a battle here, which will relieve the troops that are besieged, and then continue our drive north to take the rest of Maryland and maybe even push into Pennsylvania in the east in the hopes of ending the war soon. Uh, the, strat the national morale of the federal armies is at 41. I believe they collapse at 25. Uh, we are at 99, as you might guess, because the war is going very well for us. If you see total casualties, 126,000 federals, 69,000 confederates, and we have over 33,000 federal troops currently in prison camps. We have two prison camps built. Both of those are over capacity. We could parole the soldiers, but that would give the federals a huge surplus amount of soldiers they could re-recruit, at least a percentage of them. I'd rather not do that. Meanwhile, in the West, uh, things are heating up uh, near the uh, Western Kentucky portion of the theater here. The Army of Tennessee, the first corps of about 25,000 men there. And then uh, what is this? Also the Department of the West. So about 30,000 soldiers are in along the Mississippi River here in the West. Uh, we have Johnson's Corps of the Army of the West of about 18,000 men. And then we also have 19,000 men of the Army of the Tennessee, which are attempting to converge on the federal forces just southeast of Cairo. We may have a battle there soon. And then we also have the right wing of the Army of the Tennessee uh, advancing toward Bowling Green. And then they're going to swing west to deal with the Army of the Ohio in sort of western Kentucky as well. Not quite sure how many troops are here. That depot's in the way. I can't see. Uh, at least 4,200 soldiers in the Department of the Ohio. I think there's another core underneath there that I can't see. Uh, but there's at least another force there uh, that we're going to be dealing with. And then we also have Porterfield's Corps, which is not in the greatest situation from a readiness perspective. His 13,000 men, which is the second corps of the Army of the West, is going to advance back up toward St. Louis, which has fallen back into federal hands. I'm assuming there's an army up there somewhere, uh, but we're going to go try and retake St. Louis. So that's the plan. All right. Thank you for the sub, by the way, Potato. Potato Piddler. All right. So let's go. I'm assuming we'll have a battle here soon. You can see those two cores being driven off after that successful victory. I guess it's the midterms of 1862. Slow winter movement as we try and bring Longstreet East. What the fuck just happened? Oh, it is new well chapter. That war is so terrible, or we should grow too fond of it. Robert E. Lee. I guess we'll watch this terrible voice acting. Chapter three. A war so terrible. The vast bodies of American men in companies, regiments, brigades, armies of tens of thousands strong march to the beat of the drum, clashing, maneuvering, cheering, yelling, killing, perishing. I'm reading off a list. 
The rebellion that was to be over in 90 days in a neat showdown is now a war so terrible that America has never before witnessed such ruin. From the ill-organized, poorly drilled, and equally poorly led mass of eager amateurs thrown at the mercy of modern firepower of Minye Ball, shot and shell, disciplined armies of determined veterans emerge. The innovations that once served bringing economic growth and spreading civilization have now been harnessed to serve this terrible war. Constantinus at Skynet. Steamships clad in iron navigate the waterways. <laughs> while troop movements and logistical support utilize railroads, transforming war itself from Napoleonic to industrial, providing new means of slaughter in the fields of battle with never before seen efficiency. Yeah. Having secured continuing support in Union policymaking for the time being, President Lincoln is determined to win the war, to again unite the nation. But the prolonged war and the mounting casualties are starting to take their toll, with the number of volunteers diminishing and political rivals in support of immediate peace with the South emerging with louder voices. Uh, to number silence two, these Constantinus. Voices, Lincoln needs decisive military victories. As long as the Union armies Not a are victorious, to restart the cutscene, so you betcha. Long the people will fight. If the willingness of the citizen to fight dies down, so will any hopes of restoring the Union. Fuck it, draft them. In the South, the war that was supposed to ensure independence, preferably with the support of the sympathizers of the Southern cause, has reached a point of no return. With the war dragging on, and with the seemingly inexhaustible northern resources against them, chances of victory seem to slip farther into horizon. But we occupied Washington, D.C. <laughs> For the South to prevail, decisive action must be taken to break the northern spirits and armies to force them to award the southern states their independence in choosing their own destiny. That is their God-given right. Even if achieving it means unprecedented suffering, want, and slaughter. As bad as the narration is, the video, War like, it's fighting, well edited. And fighting means killing. Between the footage and the photos and all of that, it's very well put together. Less so the narrator, but hey, you know. Okay, well, um, so nothing changes, <laughs> as far as I can tell. The war is still ongoing. Uh, did we get any of those troops down in Richmond yet? Like, because the troops in Washington, D.C. need reinforcements, no, just 2,000. And Longstreet has taken his... Did he stop moving? The bloodiest war in America. Casualties are mounting. Okay. New objectives. All right, let's take a look at that. Let's pause. So there's new objectives. Capture Kentucky. That's not new. Capture Washington, D.C. Break Union morale. None of that's new. Union morale below 50. Oh, isn't it? The presidential elections of November 9th. Okay. See Lincoln. Oh, that's 1864. Never mind. But their morale is below 50, so I don't. I don't know why. Okay. Anyway. Um, what are my losses? About 60,000. Maybe 70. 
Alright, so those guys are moving. Do I have to make sure that the guys in the west are still moving? It looks like they're all still moving. Okay. All right. Uh, the question is, where will the uh, battle happen first? I think it's going to be in Kentucky. So Joseph E. Johnson is... Ooh, can we wait a minute? 34,000 versus 14,000. Let's withdraw. And then have you move south now. I wanted you guys all to be in the supporting distance of each other. Where's that army of the Mississippi coming from? Uh, okay, here. The army of Tennessee. And the army of the West. But, 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 but. Deploy to defend. Then bring Johnson south so that we can coordinate this goddamn movement. Come on, Johnson. Get your ass in gear. Get down there. Uh, that's a different battle. 26,000 versus 19,000. Where are we fighting? Central Kentucky? Okay. I didn't really want to fight there, but we will. Let's fight that battle. We're going to go for it. Central Kentucky. Near Munfordville, 27,000 Federals versus about 20,000 Confederates. And yes, Charcoal, I have been playing this game a fair bit on the channel. It has its issues, but it's also like one of the few Civil War games out there that lets you do the things it lets you do. And it does a tolerable job most of the time. Loving the top button only style. Like up here? What do you mean? All right. Felix Solokofa. Are we on the defensive? We are. Okay, that makes things easier being a, a smaller force. Solokofa. Solokofa! Uh, what do we. This is the objective we're technically supposed to defend. This little ridge line would be a nice defensive spot. Where are they going to come on the map? North here? I would assume they're going to come across this roadway. Down this main road. They might cut over left. So we could defend out front. We're going to be outnumbered. So we want to have good defensive ground. Is this good ground? Um, big creek looks nice. This creek here? There's a river here. The only problem with defending the river or the creek line is that there's multiple crossing points. So we'd be very divided in terms of what we're defending. Hearts Creek could be a defensive position, but that's behind the objective. Same for this creek over here to the right. Big Creek has a nice elevation point here with some woods that could be defensible. But I think that line's going to be too long because if they move down this roadway to the right, they could likely flank us fairly easily. Hmm. We could put the artillery in the middle here on this elevation. Smith's division in a single line to the right, perhaps. And then we could just refuse the line. to make it harder to flank us. Um, 
Walker's division in a single line off to the left. The artillery kind of in these woods on this elevation as well. I don't love that. What if we do this? What if we deploy them over here on the left to guard against these two bridges? Imbedin, is he commanding cavalry? He is. So we can put Imbedin's cavalry to guard this bridge to our rear. And then Kershaw... Could also guard the right flank if they swing way right. So you could put Kershaw over here on this ridge line here. We'll put Imbedin with Kershaw. I don't really like what I'm like. I don't. I don't have a great opinion of any of these defensive positions really kind of all right so actually what we could do this doesn't make much sense to deploy in this ridge line because they're not going to cross the river here so they're either going to cross the river over here on the left where walker's brigade is or they're going to cross along one of these bridges along here to the north which would make a defensive position make more sense like up here along the river there's some elevation here we can use that uh are these guys dug in yeah the, the railroad actually is a natural defensive position Of course, the leaves are flank open, so we'll just refuse it. Put them on this ridge line here. We will put the artillery Do we want to do that? The artillery facing left, they march right past it. That's probably a little exposed, right? What about this creek line here? We could put them up. Oh, I can't deploy that far north. Okay. These guys are all basically in trenches on this uh, railroad here. 12 pound howitzers off to the left. 24 pound howitzers here. So put the artillery in the woods on our left flank. They should have a nice field of fire there. And then we'll put one battery of artillery back here in case they cross where Walker is. And then we'll actually deploy Walker a little bit ahead of the fence line here. And then we're going to build some uh, some parapets. I don't know what direction. the Is it right to left or left to right? I'm not sure. I think it's left to right. Hope so. Yes, it is. Okay. We'll put this division in frickin' trenches over here. With 
abatis and everything like that in front. So the enemy's not likely to attack through this very difficult terrain on these two bridges in the south, I don't think. We've got one cavalry brigade guarding our rear in case they go the way long route to come around us. I think it's more likely the enemy's going to attack up here on the right, which is where we're deploying these troops. And then we'll deploy the artillery commander here, and then we'll get Kershaw's Springfield musket. Actually, do we have any repeaters? No, they're all Springfield musketoons. We'll put the cavalry... Because there are multiple enemy armies, right? Department of Pennsylvania and Northern Virginia. So they could come on the map in two spots. They could come over here on the right as well. So I think actually, I don't think it's likely they can overwhelm two, to even just two brigades that are well positioned in these trenches. So let's do this. Let's take the Springfield Rifle Boys. They'll be basically a reserve, and they'll be on this fence line behind us. Meanwhile, Loring and Field will deploy in the trenches. Then we've got the one artillery battery, Jackson's Howitzers, guarding them. So that will free Pemberton up to join the rest of Imboden and have the cavalry division deploy as a division to watch our troops flank. So they'll stick just a little bit to the right here in mounted formation to kind of keep an eye on things. Make sure the enemy doesn't just go around our flank. In fact, let's deploy Kershaw down here on this road and Pemberton on this road a little bit further up with Imbedin on this hill. Okay. I think that about does it. Let's also switch. Is there a long-range fire option for artillery? I don't know about for artillery, but for infantry, we're going to set everybody to long-range fire. And there you go. Middle ford between our two armies. They could go through here. I'm not as worried about this because I don't think there's a road to this middle ford for them to easily come between our armies. Like, armies usually stick to road marching. I guess that is a risk. So... I guess we can take B's, D's brigade and move them back here. We'll see. I mean, this this brigade basically will act as a reserve. They can march north if needed. Okay. Let's see what happens. And we're off. The battle is underway at times 10 speed. I suppose they could spawn on either of these southern objectives, but I don't think that's likely. I think they'll spawn on... The first army will start here. I'm getting like a little flickery indicator that there's a unit there. I don't know how we would see them from back here, but... So both of their armies arrive, McClellan and Patterson. These are commanders of the original armies raised. Well, not McClellan, but... I feel like the Union should probably have sacked Patterson and maybe McClellan by now for just the amount of times we've defeated them. Haven't seen McDowell lately in command of anything, though, so. Oh, 
Zack. Okay. Oh, shit. They're going around us? They cross to the right. They're already out beyond our flank. Is that a road? Like, what are they marching on? I guess it's kind of a road. That's weird. All right, well, it looks like they've turned our whole position. So let's do this. Smith, move your division over here. Here's the question. Do we fall back completely? Or... Thanks for the follow, 65. So we can put ourselves into a difficult position. This cavalry is going to engage, aren't they? They're going to be sucked into an engagement. Um, is there a better defensive line further south? I should have first seen this. Let's do this. Cheatham deploy here. The battle is joined. Smith deploy here. I'm going to put the artillery up here. Cavalry, your job is to Survive long enough to give me some time. That's a lot of horses back here. We've already lost 166 men. Okay. It does say you have uh, good ground, but... Get out of there, Pemberton! Don't route, don't route, don't route, please. Just, you died enough. Are you still under fire? Like, I don't think you're actually taking flanking fire at this point. I think you got out of there. Okay. Smith, why aren't you moving? going to move these two brigades up here. They should delay the, any advance down this main roadway long enough, hopefully, for Smith to get his boys out of there. All right. Smith's boys are, are moving now, too. So Solkoffer is going to deploy two divisions further south. I don't think it's likely anyone's going to cross the river over here, so we might bring Walker's division forward. We're already bringing the artillery forward. Okay. She's going to march north and then she can swing back that way. Okay, whatever. Oh, Pemberton broke. What the hell happened? You weren't even being shot at anymore. You fucking coward. I hate my, art my uh, cavalry commanders in this game. They suck. They just all die. Maybe I don't know how to use cavalry. I suppose we could have advanced on them rather than fallen back. It felt like we were already turned out of our position and advancing was not likely a sound sound move. All right, let's move a little bit faster. Cavalry seems more cumbersome in this game than infantry, which is a little bit frustrating. Let's actually move Smith here on this.
Okay, we'll move Smith to this fence line over here. I think the enemy will pass in front of it. And then we'll move Cheatham over here. So we'll have kind of an L position with the artillery up on these heights. Oh, shit. Imbidens engaged with enemy infantry. I'm sure these guys are all going to die now, too. But the infantry needs to hold long enough for our regular, or the cavalry needs to hold long enough for our infantry to get up and the artillery to redeploy. So we are going to stick around there for a while. Let's also move Walker's division up from the south. We'll have one of his brigades stay in the trenches. Well, not if they're going to march all that fucking way. Right, cavalry, are you dying? Yes, you are, but you're stable. 163 casualties. You're dismounted now, so you should lose your at least a smaller target in theory. I don't know if these guys are routed. They're rallying, or what the deal is there. All right, we're just going to speed up a little bit while we get our troops moving and while the cavalry dies. They're panicked. Or that's the division. Kershaw's boys are holding valiantly. Buying Smith time to get into position, and there they broke. But you did your job. All right. So Armistead, like, you should just be deploying here. But then you can try to rally your boys. Kershaw did a decent job. The enemy lost some troops too. Their first brigade took 250 casualties, pushing us back. Walker's brigades are coming up. Huger is now detached. Right, you guys are all just in a freaking iron discipline. Where, like, where, where are you going? Yeah, that's a logical... Just fire through your own lines. That was not a very tactical position there. Whatever. I don't know that the game really punishes you for it. Hey, Armistead, get your boys into, like, some common sense type of a formation, okay? And then I guess we'll just have uh, D's ex extend his line to the right. And then we're just going to do an open open field fight then, I guess. Lead better move forward. Cheatham's division will deploy you forward as well. This routed cavalry is just hanging out up here. Terminator 3. I never saw any of the newer Terminators constantaneous. I think the last one I saw was 3. Eh. 2 was the best. 3 wasn't terrible. 
despite reputations perhaps feeling it was. Um, all right. So we're all in a pretty terrible formation here. It's eight in the morning, so nighttime likely will not be our salvation. We do have good weapons. We've got Enfield mus rifled muskets, Springfield rifled muskets, and Fayettevilles. The enemy's deploying. Why is this unit forming in a goddamn column? Why are you in a freaking column? Forming a goddamn line. Is there not enough room? Like I don't I don't understand. Uh, you think multiplayer would be for Grand Tactician? I mean, multiplayer for Grand Tactician would be great. I think the problem is the game's not designed for it. Like, that wasn't how the game was built. I think trying to make it work would be very difficult. And I also think, like, if you look at kind of the experience with Scourge of War, where things were a little bit slow and whatnot with multiplayer and, and things were a little bit janky. I don't know that Grand Tactician is optimized well enough for a seamless multiplayer kind of an experience. So I don't I don't know if that would really work. But in theory, yeah, it's a great idea. Alright, so we've got two brigades moving through the woods to our right. We've got, we're putting a brigade there to stop them. And we've also got the second brigade coming at us across the open. Which these guys are going to get torn to pieces. They're trying to close the, the distance. I think they might even be charging. They are coming on quick, but they've got three brigades firing into them. One's going to fire into their flank the closer they get. Leadbetter is going to be the uh, recipient of the charge by the looks of it. They're getting a volley off here right as they close. Maybe they're actually not going to charge. They're just going to engage in a suicidal open field or uh, firefight. Okay. Well, that's with your flank in the air, although technically it's giving them a uh, defensive bonus because they are along a uh, fence line, I guess. Is my artillery, my artillery is coming. Yeah, they're already pulling back. They're like, we're getting shredded here. Meanwhile, on our right, D's 2100 men is facing about 5,000, almost 6,000 Federals between the 1st and 2nd Brigades here. Getting a little bit of support from Armistead, who's also firing at some of these guys. Meanwhile, that 2nd Brigade is routing. If the enemy's all going to come down this road, we might be able to bunch them up and flank them as they come up. Which I'm trying to do here. Artillery isn't even factoring in. They're not even in position yet. We've got Loring and Field Brigades coming up. And then Hughes is going to deploy his brigade on the far left in that trench line because I'm not strong-willed enough to abandon it. I don't know where the first battery lost all those men from, but we routed that apparently. Second brigade routed. More of these troops are coming forward here. These brigades getting nervous. Solkoffer, go give your uh, personal inspired leadership here. Your D's outnumbered three to one on the right. Trying to engage the 2nd Brigade the same way we did the, the, the previous 2nd Brigade, which routed. Looks like these guys are going into a melee. Great, they got two brigades moving forward here and charging us. We do have the advantage that they are outflanked, according to the game. I have no reserves. And our right flank brigade, D's broke. 
Well, they're just going to overwhelm me, aren't they? This isn't good. Armistead, give him the cold steel, boys. You can't fire, I don't think, at you either because you're, you're in support because you're in too close, I think. Oh, my God. Now Armistead's flanked. He's only lost 200 men. That's my, like, I guess... Have a little more courage, buddy. Armistead broke. At least he was outnumbered like four to one in terms of the melee. Right, we should get a volley or two into kind of disorganized Federals as they try and pursue. Our right flank is gone. That wood line was not friendly to us. Let's shift you guys Pelham South. There and there. I've got more brigades on the way. My artillery is apparently firing in support. Not sure what I did to get that to happen, but good job, boys. Armistead's breaking and running. Helm's going to extend the right flank of our force. That's not all they need to do, but that does work in certain circumstances. Their second brigade's trying to rally up here along with their first battery. Steel's brigade is now in action against multiple enemy detachments. I thought some of these were, I guess they are artillery. This is Grand Tactician, the Civil War, Toa. Okay. So, the Tennessee State Militia is gonna get shot up. So let's actually deploy column behind, because I assume this brigade will break and then we'll have a, we'll have a second line, kind of. are using the Mississippi rifle, which I think has a sword on that. Any chance Imbidon will come up? These guys are still positioned. There's no reason to hold this one brigade back. So Hugo, you can march over there. It'll probably be too late by the time you arrive. Armistead, any chance you can rally? Go for it. Open field, fat in. Technically got some defensive terrain here, so use it. Oh god, your brigade is melting. And they're on your flank. Although 2nd Brigade here is routing. Helm is wounded. He's not even in the first line, is he? He's in the second line. The problem is here, I don't have a cohesive line. I'm like lining up one brigade, then they've got like three or four brigades mounting against me. They do outnumber me in this battle as well. We've actually inflicted more casualties on them than they on us so far. 
This is not very McClellan-like, I'll say that. Oh god. That would number be three to one. There we go, Pelham's boys got their volley in here, at least half their brigade fired. Tennessee State Militia's about to rout. Steele's troops are not in great shape. routed, lost almost 50% of his men. General Smith, the division commander, I think, just fell. Yep. I don't know who's going to replace him. Oh, the chain of command is rapidly falling apart. Despite the heavy casualties we're inflicting. got field coming up and lowering I just keep deploying these guys piecemeal and they outnumber me that's that's the core problem here. and there goes Steele's brigade they didn't fight as well their loss resistance was not very high they panicked early Zolkoffer the commanding general of the army is now wounded Yeah, it's been a little while, Red. Right, Pelham, hang in there, boy. You're the last one. I mean, we've got the two brigades coming up, but they're moving slow. And I don't think it matters anyway. Not even noon, we're going to be routed, despite the fact that we've inflicted considerably more losses on them. We must have better weapons. They must be using smooth weapons or something. Hey, Cheatham, how would you go help your boys out there? Right, second Brigade's coming for you, boys. 3,000 versus 1,700. Scurry, shift, and fire. What's the cavalry up here doing? You guys still routed? Panicked. Still don't want to fight. Okay. My artillery is at least in the fight. I guess when there's no troops in the way of your guns because all your men routed, it's easier proposition. Look at all these negative traits. Routed units nearby, enemy behind cover, under artillery, fire, casualties. You got your commander and your supporter. Those are the only two positive morale perks right now. Gaps. Fields Brigade, come on up at the double. We're gonna deploy behind Pelham because they're gonna probably route. Yeah, there's a lot of second brigades in Morindia. The naming conventions of the game are not very very good. Red, thanks for the sub, by the way. Appreciate the support. Second of the second of the second. Yeehaw, boys! Right, maybe there's a chance Steel can rally his boys. Get back in the fight. Says they're broken, but... Tell them fall back. Do they have do they have that in them or will they just break and run? I'm inclined to believe they'll just break and run if I try and pull them off the line. It'd be nice to form up down here. We issue a fallback command. Shit. Let's get them. 
Pelham, okay, we're gonna try and have you slowly fall back while under fire. See if you can hold out there. Falling back under fire is also another negative morale trait. Oring's gonna deploy here, I guess. He couldn't get, get to where he needed to be. The artillery is going to make up our right flank momentarily when Helen breaks. Hey, whoever Zolkoff or whatever, just get out of there. Preston Smith. Right, Helen is falling back. They're still alive. Moment. Bernard B, Major Bernard B of uh, Stonewall fame is commanding that battery there on the left. I'm kind of surprised Pelham's boys haven't routed yet. Their loss resistance is almost maxed out. But they did pull back and got rid of a lot of those negative modifiers. And they're still fighting. Third brigade over here. Build shifter troops. This guy should pretty much be in canister range. I'm not sure. Not. Oh, there goes Pelham. I spoke too soon. Is Huger coming up? This battle's almost over. It still classifies it as a minor defeat. The enemy still lost more men than us. But we're running and they're not. How Napoleonic have you read? A whiff of grape shot. Once field is overwhelmed, which won't probably take long. This battery of artillery, you are not going to uh, hold back three, four brigades of like 8,000 men total. A little bit of grape shot. And the artillery is about to rout. Doesn't even look like they're firing grape. It looks like they're still firing shell. Hey, the third brigade there got driven back though. forced to fall back. I don't think they were actually routed. But. Move Loring's Brigade. You're not engaged. I guess technically they're still in range. Third Brigade routed now. There you go. Move it to double. Can you get out ahead of Iverson's artillery before they route? I think once Iverson's artillery routes, that's the battle. It'll, it'll trigger an end. There they go. Iverson's artillery is routing. Defeat. Okay. So we've got to hold for 24 minutes here. While the enemy tries to pursue, we lost the battle, though. Uh, yeah, Cannibal. Also, there's an actual, like, kind of dynamic campaign, which doesn't exist in Ultimate General. I think the, the game is definitely better optimized with Ultimate General. Um, I think the battles unfold in, in a maybe a more sad. I don't know if it's a more satisfying way or not. But there's really no big campaign. It's just like set battles and missions and whatnot. Whereas this is completely dynamic based on where you move armies on the big map. Cheatham is wounded. I think all of our division commanders, so our commander's wounded. 
Our cavalry commander is wounded. Our infantry commander is wounded. Walker might be the only division commander not wounded or killed. Uh, he's two. All right, it's a minor defeat. It's unlikely to become a major because we're not going to lose more than 24% of our force. The enemy might. Who would have thought rushing six brigades in a big ball would be so effective? They weren't really in a big ball, though, Potato. They were line after line. It was very Spotsylvania Courthouse-esque, where they just had essentially a line with another brigade behind it and another brigade behind that. Like, yeah, it, maybe it, it feels a little bit, a little bit gamey, maybe, but honestly, that happened in the Civil War and, and a few assaults. The, the reason it worked for them is we didn't have a formed line. If we had a line of troops where we could just shift one brigade forward and enfilade them as they came up, you know, hit them in the flank as they advance, that, that advance would have fallen apart. Or if we had a second line behind it while also flanking them, then that advance would have fallen apart. But as it was, we did not, and uh, it worked out for them. things along you can see they're trying it again they're keeping their other brigades back while they're flanking us or while they're advancing one to a charge but uh, we ran out of time there so that's the end of that battle the battle of Munfordville the right wing of the army of Tennessee was defeated uh, the enemy lost about 6,500 infantry 20 of their 20 guns uh, so about a little bit more than one-fifth of their army we lost about 4,000 men out of just 20,000 uh, men, so about one-fifth of our our army, a little bit, little bit less, a uh, little bit less than one-fifth, or actually might be one-fifth. Anyway, we lost considerable percentages, 31 of our 42 guns, 457 of our 2,400 cavalry, 3,900 of our 19,000 infantry, um, so 4,600 versus 6,500 casualties. They lost more, but they won the battle. The right core or the right wing will be thrown into disarray and driven from the field. So minor defeat at Munfordville. Um, the saving grace is the casualties the Federals took. And that is half the army of Tennessee defeated. We will probably have the right wing withdraw towards somewhere around Nashville, uh, which is still in our hands. And then see what the left wing is up to in uh, western Kentucky. If we can defeat those two armies there then we'll probably bring the Western uh, Army to, or the Western wing, the left wing, to Nashville as well, where we'll reform the Army in in full. But right now, the left wing of the Army of Tennessee is assisting the right core of the Army of the West to try and defeat the Union just south of Cairo. So we've got a lot of, uh, a lot of pieces in motion, but uh, unfortunately, that was a defeat. Munfordville, we can see here the enemy suffered 6,700 casualties, 902 killed, 248 wounded, um, so about 1,100 permanent losses. We lost 4,600 men, 586 killed, 811 missing, so we actually lost more permanent casualties if we assume the 811 are captured and then 586 killed. I do like the way they differentiate that there, though, because it's like, yeah, they lost more men, but most of those were wounded, whereas we lost four times as many missing or captured, so that kind of changes the complexion of the battle a bit. But with that being said, that's going to do it for today's episode of Grand Tactician, the Civil War. Um, the war, I guess, isn't over yet. We suffered a defeat. Uh, hopefully things will turn around in the forthcoming fights. But until then, this is the Historical Gamer, as always, saying thank you for watching, and until next time, I'm out.